promise you this month of june is an amazing month the month is you know so the tip for this month in time space is learning so this month we're learning we're learning to be better and better you know to learn life skills and today i'm going to be talking about negotiation so what do you know about negotiation because negotiation is not just something negotiation happens every day it happens in your life every day so it's a skill that you need to learn as a person it's a life skill so it's not something you joke with okay so i'll be giving us some tips on negotiation based on a book that you know most negotiation but these are points that are work that, that are, these are principles that have worked so i'll be sharing with you so you can practicalize it in your everyday life is it when you're buying something is it when you're talking to somebody is it when you want somebody to understand what you're talking about you know whatever it is really all right so before you start a negotiation that is what i'm talking about right now before you start a negotiation what are the things that you have to do first thing you need to do is you need superior information what do, I, what do I mean by superior information? You need to have investigated, you need to have researched about that person, that product, that place. You know, whatever is that thing that you want to do, you need to have done some research about it. You need to know about it. You need to have, you know, like, you need to ha have knowledge ahead so that you don't just go there. Especially if it's for you that you're going for an interview, for example. You also can get an interview in an organization and you've not researched about that organization. Don't make decisions for other people. Let the ideas flow from them. Hear what they have to say. For example, you may you may you may be shooting yourself you in the foot. For example, you go for an interview. They ask you, what salary um, would you like to take in this job? And then you are telling them two hundred thousand. And maybe what they had in mind was 350,000. You know, you'll be, you'll be shocking, you'll be surprising them rather than them surprising you. The best question you'll have asked would have been, oh, what is your salary structure for this organization? You know, that kind of thing. So you don't just, you know, like, don't make decisions for other people. Allow people, whenever you find yourself in any decision, you know, any any points where you have to negotiate, shades, you have to interface with people, you have to make decisions, you know. I'm talking about negotiations. Like where you have to because to be honest, this word negotiation, we just see it in the formal way. Negotiation is negotiation. When you are trying to, you know, buy make somebody buy your idea, or even if it's just normal conversation, it's a negotiation. So you have to stay calm. You know. Don't be too, don't be urgy, don't be like, you know, jittery, don't be too fast. Do you get? The next point is anticipate questions. Before you go for a negotiation as an individual, you know, before you buy that product, because you negotiate to buy that product, before you engage in that conversation, before you go for that interview, before you like, Interface with people really. Anticipate questions. Think ahead. Okay, what are the likely questions that they will ask me? Especially you that are going for an interview. Because it just it just sits well with me to use interview as an example for you. You know? Especially you that are going for an interview. You have to ask them. You have to think of questions that they will ask you. So that by the time you're answering, you're giving smart answers. You're not just giving answers based on assumptions or based on what you think because remember our first point you've done research already so when you think of likely questions of course and you've researched about it ahead of time before you go for the interview or before you buy that product or before you do whatever has to do before you interface with those people or that person you know you'll be able to give smart answers like smart tangible reasonable answers the next point all the time you don't have to express yourself all the time sometimes it's better to just be quiet if you don't have an answer if you don't have 
something to say. You know, it's not every time you have to be a, a, a nice girl or a nice guy. You know, it's not every time you have to just like talk. You know, it's not every time you have to like express yourself. Sometimes you can just keep quiet. You know, it's better than saying rubbish or saying nonsense. An interview, for example, evaluate your employer. Know what, know everything that you need to know about your employer if you're going for an interview. Know key points that you need to know. It will really help you. The next point, evaluate yourself. Very important. Because you've written this in your CV, you've written that in your CV, you've, you know, said so much. Or you you think you can do something. You think you know something. Sometimes you must have um, written so much in your CV. You know, you need to evaluate yourself. Evaluate yourself. Can I really do these things I say I can do? Am I capable of these things that I say I can do? Can I really deliver these targets that I say I can do? Do you understand? It is very, very important you evaluate yourself. You know, do you have a special skill? Do you have a special, like, do you have a special certification? You know, what is that thing that you have that is so peculiar to you? What is that thing that you have that is so peculiar to you that, you know, the company wants to hire you? And is it even important to the company? And if they don't hire you, you know, will it matter to a competitor? And then you have to prove it. You have to be able to prove it. That is for preparing, you know, before going for a, a negotiation, you know, why preparing? Those are like the basic points that you need to note. So like the basic things you need to on it okay so now we're moving i'm moving on to the next point you know when you're actually faced with a negotiation because you remember previously i talked about the things to prepare for before going for a um, negotiation so now when you're actually faced with a negotiation like things to prepare for so the first point is so it's sharing some of the points he had learned with us over the years you know he said you can't negotiate anything unless you know the market. Remember, in our in, in the earlier conversation, I said research. If you can't say yes, it's a no. Don't be in between a yes and no. And don't say yes because you want to be nice and because somebody thinks you should say yes to make you look like a good person. Say no if you think it's a no. The biggest tool in negotiation is if it doesn't work according to the way you want it to. If you're not going to have a deal eventually, just walk away. That's one of the biggest tools in negotiation, according to this author. Next point, it's not how much it's what. It's how people, it's what people think it's what. Because to be honest, there's no business that thrives without what people define it to be. So. If people think it's black and you think it's white, your thinking doesn't really matter because you won't sell. So what people think is what is what matters the most. Number five. Number five. Many people listen. Very few people hear. So you can't make headway if all you do is talk, 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 and talk. You can't do all the talking. Point number six, uh, sometimes the given reason is not usually the real reason. If you want to succeed, find out what the real reason is. And then your probability of becoming successful is, becomes very, very high. Very, very high. Point number seven. <laughs> this is funny, dude. No one ever chokes to death swallowing his or her own pride. So when it gets to a point where you have to swallow your pride, swallow your pride. Because to be honest, if you want things to go your way when it comes to negotiation, you just have to win some and lose some. Or you should, for you to get a win-win situation, you have to let go of some things and the other person lets go of some things and you both meet in the middle. Point number 
in the long run instincts are no match for information so you have to trust your instincts as a business person especially when you are a professional in something you've been doing over the years you know you have to trust your instincts points number <laughs> this is funny it says make decision with your heart and you end up with a heart disease <laughs> so don't be emotional like you can't make decisions emotional it's a wrong it's one of the wrongest decisions that you ever make you know if you have a dream go for it when you have an opportunity to express that dream go for it the next point is point number 11 look for honest people deal with honest people it's not even about the contracts it's not even about the negotiations see if you have to deal with an honest person if you have to deal with an honest person deal with an honest person instead research about the person know who you are entering transactions with because no matter how good the contract is some people can still find their way out of it and you still be on the losing end i'm telling you so do with an honest person to help you a lot there is no such thing as man this is an ex the experience of an experienced man <laughs> there's no such thing as a final offer you can always still keep on negotiating don't always be the person that wants to talk every time talk 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 how <laughs> sorry to bring in this example but you know how girls will be like ah if you don't do this for me i would do this if you don't do this for no like if you want to really get the best out of your negotiations if you really want to get the best out of your negotiations trust me don't give an ultimatum as give it when you really mean it you know ultimatum is not something that you just fly around anyhow naturally ultimatums are not even really good for relationships you know but if you are going to give an ultimatum in any negotiation make sure you mean it when you disagree smile when you disagree smile keep smiling oh it's like oh no i don't agree no i don't agree oh no 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 don't be like no i don't agree no i don't agree. be like no i don't agree no oh no you know smile keep smiling <laughs> okay next point is disagreement so always look for a way where you both will agree look for a point where you guys will agree always think of a win-win situation don't be selfish don't let it be all about you Eh? you know think about the other party too so that both of you will live smiling both of you will live happy both of you will feel good about your decisions if you can afford to buy your way out of the bread then you don't have a problem you know don't make everything every problem you have always think about you know how you can resolve that problem always if you can you know talk to somebody you know that can help you quickly solve that problem i think you know you should do that next point is important this point is very very this point is very very important and i want to stay don't discuss important things in an environment where so many people are so many people can hear you like your ideas once another person gets hold of it like this you just be shocked that what you've been planning somebody else is already executing it so where so many people are you know where walls have ears because walls have ears and, and that is people you know so don't be in a place where don't discuss business where so much people can overhear you, to be honest. The next point is top negotiators keep information about themselves and about their competitors or even their planners or even even um, other people or even their soon to be negotiators, people that they have to negotiate with. You know, so you never can tell when you need that skill. You never can tell. So you have to be on top of your game finally or before finally <laughs> your attitude determines your altitude to be honest your attitude is 
very very important you know the way you act the way ha huh, trust me if you're not if you're a gloomy person eh you get gloomy results if you're a sunny person you get sunny results next point is and next point my final point timing is very very important just like the scriptures that says there is time for everything trust me there is time for everything under the earth so as a negotiator as somebody who is going to go and buy something or do something all these points that i've said to you they are very very important they are not things that you are about to joke with there are things that you have to take seriously if you want to be on top of your game be it at work as a career person be it at business as a business person be it a student be it you know you also, you also just go to the market to go and buy something from that market someone or that market man whatever aspect of your life you are negotiating every day of your life you are negotiating so these points take them to heart timing is very important because for example, let me even give you the simplest example of timing when it comes to food. Look at tomato. Early in the year, tomato is always very, very cheap. And if you tend to want to buy tomato during rainy season, you should know that tomato, or maybe not rainy season, maybe towards the end of the year, tomato is, is going to be very expensive. You understand? So before tomato gets expensive, if you are smart enough, early in the year, you should buy enough and probably refrigerate. You know, it will last you Ultra, you will have to, even have to bother about tomato when everybody shouts that oh tomato is expensive do you understand that's timing so and that is you know one example of many so to so be honest timing your timing is key your timing is know what you want don't go to the negotiation table without knowing what you want for example you want to buy something don't go to the market without knowing exactly what you want to buy and how much you want to spend always know what you want very important point number two. point number two states that always go first you can go first you know when you're in the point where you want to negotiate you can go first be the first to ask you can be the first to ask oh okay how much is this madam okay um sir oh i would like this i need this always you can go first if you don't know because the studies have shown that the person who goes first usually gets close to getting what they want. So you can go first. The next point is, know what your adversary wants as well. Because it will help you a lot. If you know what the other party wants, it will help you a lot. Because it will help you in achieving a win-win situation. It will help you to think ahead. Remember when I talked about um, um, the process of research? It will help you think ahead. Especially when you know what your partner wants, it will help you a great deal. So it will help you to achieve that win-win situation. Next point is don't be in a rush, because the other party may even be they may they may be a deadline, and if there's a deadline, they may want to pressure you to make the wrong choice. They may want to pressure you to make the wrong decision. So I will advise you don't rush. Don't be in a hurry to want to give in, because sometimes that time pressure may even work in your favor. You understand so don't be in a rush next point is be ready to walk away that's the next point be ready to walk away because don't always want to rush into a deal that you are not interested in or something that will not favor you in the end let it be that if you know somebody that can help you let it be the last result and if it will not favor you in the long run be ready to walk away it will help you a great deal. It, I know it might have to take a lot of courage, but be ready to walk away. Next point: Don't concede in another diary. That's don't give up alone. In a negotiation, one both of you have to drop something to achieve something. Don't be the only one that is losing something. You understand? So you both so that you can achieve a win-win situation. So you, you both can be in the middle. Same. Listening is a life skill. Listen to your to your um, opponents, what, what they are saying to you, what they are telling you. Sometimes they will tell you, oh, I want, ah, the price is too much. But they want quality. And quality costs a lot of money. So that is when your negotiating skills will come in and be like, oh, if you want quantity, it goes for this price. If you want quality, it goes for this price. 
and then the decision will be left for them to make eventually because quality costs money and they'll be willing to spend the money because they want quality even though the money is a lot for them trust me it is very very is important so i'll be ending my conversation today on negotiation so do subscribe like share my notification and um, share my videos turn on your notifications do subscribe share like turn on your notification buttons for my videos because this month i'll be bringing you tips on how to do business better on how to do career better on how to do your lifestyle better on how to you know better approach things and then we've talked up we've, we've spoken about negotiation today stay tuned for the next amazing video i'm bringing to you again and i remain your girl your host your conversationalist i remain tamra speaks tamra speaks and if you are new to tamra speaks woo, welcome i love you so much and i appreciate you and do subscribe if you haven't subscribed please share my videos so that people can subscribe we want to grow this community so more people can learn from this channel thank you so much do have a wonderful day bye